Hey friends, so live musicians, especially guitar players, are known for having giant, obnoxious, huge pedal boards, right? But that's because you need quick access to all the effects that you're going to use inside of your songs on stage, right? Ableton Live is an incredible multi-effect platform. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's the best multi-effect platform that exists, period. And I'm going to prove it using dummy clips. Let's check it out. Okay, so on track one, I just have one of my amp racks that you can actually download. These are free if you want them. These are just guitar racks, and this is what my tone sounds like. So that's my tone, right? And it's using this clean amp. Of course, no amp is actually totally clean. When I really dig in here, I get a little bit of distortion, but if I play lightly... Right. Now you can watch a video and download all of these amps if you want them. They're in a different video. I'll put them up in the corner. But essentially what we're focused on now is how I can use Ableton to switch through different effect chains. So let's go ahead and just listen to what I've got going on here. On this track, I've got a couple clips here, and these are called dummy clips. Essentially these clips don't contain any musical information. All they contain is some control data. So let's just go through here and listen to these different effects. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so you can see how fast calling up these effects is. If I play this clip, I get my ensemble. In fact, I'll play a chord and then launch one of these and you can hear what I mean. Right? Boom, it's instant, okay? You might be thinking like, hey man, that's cool, but you're using a mouse. Like, I don't want to use a mouse on stage. Well, of course, you don't have to. You could easily take a MIDI controller, like a foot pedal, like this Soft Step 2, and map that to each one of these clip positions, right? Just by using MIDI mapping. You know, I could map all these to different MIDI controllers or whatever. So again, this is the most capable multi-effect platform that exists. And so let's go through here and let's look at how we would build this from scratch. So in order to really demonstrate this, I'm going to go as far as making a brand new set. Okay. Okay. So here's a brand new set. And as you can see, you can see my guitar coming down channel one right here in this track. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to in mode, which means that this track is now listening to my guitar. Right now, before we get any farther real quick, it's a great idea to go into your preferences and make sure that your buffer size is as low as you can get away with it. I recommend 64 or 128 samples of buffer size. Essentially, this will determine how long the round trip latency is of your input to output. Okay, so make sure you do that. Now, I'm going to drag this to the first track. We're going to get rid of these MIDI tracks, and I'll go ahead and grab my amp that I was using before. Again, if you want these, they're just going to be down in the comments in the description. So here's my amp. <laughs> Okay, so most of the time when you're using Ableton, you are using its built-in routing as it stands. But Ableton is super flexible in its routing. Instead of sending every single track to the master track, you can actually send tracks into each other. And so in this way, we don't have to have our effects all live on the same track as the guitar. Okay, so we could think of this track as, let's just call this the amp. Okay. And this will comprise of our inputs and the amps and stuff like that. And in this track, this will comprise of our, let's just call this pedal board. All right. So this track, I want this track to go into this track before it goes to the master. It's as easy as going down here to audio two and choosing pedal board because that's the name of this track. Okay. So no longer is this track going to the master, but if I play, we can't hear anything. Why is that? That's because this track needs to be listening. And you'll also notice that my mic is going to get doubled. Hey, hey, see that? Because we have an input selected. So I'm going to turn this input to no input. And even though it says no input, because this track is being sent to this track, check this out. Now we're getting the signal from this track to go through this track so we can build all kinds of effects here. So let's go ahead and start working on an effect. Let's grab, for example, just a classic chorus, okay? So here's a chorus on here. Maybe I'll turn it to ensemble mode. I'll turn up the rate. Maybe turn up a little bit of warmth. Awesome. So there we go. That's our chorus ensemble sound. So let's just think of this as one pedal. All right. 
So something we need to do is we need to make a dummy clip in order to turn this on and off. So I'll just make another track just for the heck of it. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna record whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm not worried about what I'm recording. I'm just recording a quick clip, okay? Just recording this clip. Now I have a clip here, okay? Now, there may be some signal in it due to having my input right here, so I'm just gonna turn the gain all the way down, all right? Negative infinity, right? So now we're gonna rename this dry. Okay, so essentially this clip has no anything in it, nothing audible, no MIDI. There's nothing in this audio clip. It's just a blank audio clip. So I'm gonna drag this over to pedal board and delete this track. Essentially, I've just made myself a dummy clip. So what this clip is gonna represent is the completely default state of my pedal board, meaning that everything is turned off and that we have a dry signal, okay? But I'm gonna duplicate this clip, but now I'll double click up here and now I can see any effects that are in this track. And what I'll do is I'll turn the chorus ensemble off. All right, now I'm gonna double click on this clip that I duplicated. And if I look over here in the envelopes, we can see, oh, check that out. Chorus ensemble, right, from my drop down list, device on. What's up with that? Well, essentially, if you click on any control on any effect. Okay, let's click on dry wet and then double click on the clip. Check it out. Chorus Ensemble dry wet has been auto selected. Essentially, if you click on anything, let's click on rate. Now we can see that rate has been selected. Essentially, if you click on anything in an effect, it'll appear in the clip's automation data. All we're looking at is the automation data, okay, inside of the clip. So if I click on the on button and switch it to off, I can go to this clip, click on the envelope, and pull it up, okay? Ableton refers to the automation inside of clips as envelopes, all right? So, now it's turned on, so check it out. When I play this clip, I get my chorus ensemble. When I play this clip, it's totally dry. Ensemble, dry. So I can just rename this to Ensemble, done, right? Now, I've made myself a dummy clip. Um, something else that you're probably noticing is that I have to wait because the clips are waiting for the downbeat to switch. So right now it's dry and you can see it says one, two, three, four. I'm waiting, 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 boom, right? We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the first clip, shift click on the second one. I'll go to this page right here and I can turn off the global quantization to none, okay? So now both of these clips are set to none. So now it's instant, bam, 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 right? We're switching from dry to that ensemble effect, right? Super fast, awesome. Okay, let's build another effect. Let's go ahead and go with a tremolo. So the workflow is to copy the dry dummy clip, right? The one with no data in it. And when I play it, the chorus ensemble should shut off. Now I can build this effect up real quick. So I'll do a 50% amount. I'll switch it over to triangle and I'll turn the phase all the way down so we can get a real tremolo sound. We can make it a little more intense. Awesome, so there it is. I'll switch this off. I'll go up here, let's go ahead and rename this real quick. Now I'll go into the clip and I can see if I look at my envelopes page, auto pan device on has been switched off. So if I push this up, all of a sudden now, the auto pan, you can see also when you do this, you can see a little red dot beside the control that you've automated in the clip. So now I'll go back to dry. So both of them are now off. Play tremolo, play ensemble. Bam, it's that simple. So one more time, let's go ahead and grab, let's build an octaver. So I'm gonna do an octave down this time. I'm turning the course all the way down. I'm turning the dry wet so that we only have just a little bit of this. Let's go ahead and see what we got. I'll go ahead and turn the windowing down just a little bit so I can get a faster response. Cool, so there's that same thing. So real quick, copying dry, pasting it, turning the shifter off, double clicking on the clip, Shifter, device on, you can see it right there, bam. So now we've got our Octaver. Okay, so this is a very basic way of doing this, right? We've got three different effects that we can call up instantly just by playing these clips, right? But now let's talk about something else. Maybe you would want your chorus ensemble and your auto pan on at the same time. Well, how would you do that? Well, let's copy this clip again, and this time I'll go into this clip and I will find the device that I want. You can do this two ways. The easiest way, in my opinion, is to click on the on button of any effect and then to go into the clip and then turn the device on, 
okay? But what I can also do is click on this drop down list. This list is showing me the devices in the track. This list is showing me the parameters in each device. So I could click on this drop down list and say, all right, auto pan, device on, turn it on. Now check this out. This clip is now ensemble plus trim. So check it out. When I play this, let's look at the track. We can see that both of those effects are now on. Magic. Okay, so let's say, for example, I want the octaver. Okay, I want this effect. But I want to put reverb on it. So check this out. Clips not only contain control data for what is living in the track, but it contains control data for the track outputs. It just so happens that the track output controls include the effect sends. So right now I have a reverb and a delay by default in Ableton. I have these two effects, right? So what I can do is I can go to this octaver. I'll copy it. So I'm copying it and pasting it down here, and I'm going to say octaver verb. Octaver verb. <laughs> okay, so I'll click on effect send A, double click on the clip, drag this up. And let's drag it up pretty high so you can hear it. All right, so when I play now, I'm not going to have any reverb. But when I play this, bam, I've got verb and an octaver on at the same time. Insane. So you also can use dummy clips to just control the sends. So check this out. Let's go ahead and make a different kind of thing. Maybe we'll make a slap back delay. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this one, right? And so remember, this is our default state. Everything is off. Let's call this slap back. And now I'm gonna set up a slap back style delay in my delay send. So I could go over here. I'll turn this to time. Let's keep it kind of low. I'll turn the feedback up a lot. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on send B, okay? Double click on the clip, we can see mixer, B dash delay. We can see that it's right there, right? So mixer, mixer is the output controls for a track. So I'll turn this up, good amount. And now I think we could actually turn that speed up a bit. All right, we're getting somewhere. Maybe just a little bit more send. Bam. Awesome. Okay, so thus far you've seen that we can do individual effects, we can combine those effects together, and we can add sends. You could actually do all three if you wanted to, but let's move on to something else. So over here in the amp, this is my quote-unquote clean tone. Right? Now, we could actually set up dummy clips over here as well. I'm going to go ahead and copy this clip and paste it over here. What's up with that? That was living in this track. Well, this clip doesn't have any data in it, right? There's nothing in there. So I can name it whatever I want. In this case, I'm going to call it clean. So this is my default state that I want this track to return to when I play this clip, okay? So you could think of this as I'm going to set up channels. Commonly, guitar players will have different amp channels also accessible on their pedal board so they can go from clean to like an overdrive or distortion to like a lead tone. So we're going to make three different tones here. So I have clean. Now I'm going to duplicate this. Now, if we look at my amp, I could turn up something. Maybe I'll turn up the gain or something. So I'll click on the gain. Okay, I'm clicking on it. Double click on the clip. And as you remember before, I'm going to switch over to my envelope view and we can see amp gain. So let's crank that all the way up to 10. Okay, now let's do something else. Maybe we'll add a little bit of gain to our pedal. So I'll do that add a little gain to the pedal. Now I'm going to play this clip and let's see what we got. Cool. So we'll call that, that'll be our distortion channel. Now you can tell that the clean is a little bit quieter than the distortion. So we need to also go into the amp and maybe I'll turn the last thing down on my chain, which happens to be this compressor. So Again, my default state is 6 dB, but if I double click on distortion, I'll say, all right, makeup gain, let's go down to maybe four or something. That's a nice little tiny jump in volume, and that's about what I would expect and what I would want. Okay, so now I'm gonna copy the distortion one, paste it again. This time, I'm gonna turn the gain of the pedal way up. So I'm turning this up to about half 
So now I would consider this one, what's this? This is my lead. Okay, so now I have a clean, distortion, and a lead. And maybe I want a little more sustain out of that, so what I could do is I could go to my volume here, double click on this guy, turn the volume up, and then I will turn the output of this compressor down even more so we're squashing the signal a bit more. Right? What have I got set up here? I've got amp channels, okay? And I've got all these different effects. So my ensemble is now combined with my distortion channel. Maybe I want my octaver and my lead to go together. And maybe I want a clean slapback. All of this is so simple to simply click on MIDI mapping, get your MIDI controller out, and then map these clips to your MIDI controller. It's that simple. So you can set up a digital pedal board that's super flexible and super fast, right? So this is a, an example of a very small microcosm of a giant macrocosm you could build of an effect processor with Ableton. In my live set with my band Papadocio, I have scenes set up, okay? So you could think of this as like song part A, B, C, D, right? And I have different dummy clips set up for my vocals, for my guitar, for the MIDI pad that goes to the drummer, for my keyboard sounds, for everything else. And I have them set up in an order. So I could be like, okay, in this part of this song, I want the slap back and the lead together. In this part of this song, I want the these two together and these are different names of the scenes that I have right now hopefully now that I broke this down this seems a little bit less complex on the surface and yes there is a learning curve to all of this but I've created what I consider to be the most robust and the most thorough lessons on using Ableton Live on stage that's out there and so if you're in a band or you're a solo performer and you're interested in adding a live instrument or you're interested in doing looping or you're interested in setting up effect chains, all kinds of stuff like that, you can check out my course called Live Performance and Live Looping with Ableton Live. And I'll put a link to it up here and then down in the description and comments. But to justify my statement as to why I believe Ableton is the best multi-effect platform that exists is because you can instantly recall any effect combination that you want. You could cascade 10 tracks in front of each other and change their routing. You could do all kinds of crazy crazy stuff there. The routing is nuts. You could set up multiple buses that take care of different tracks and different configurations. And the other thing I haven't mentioned is that look how many effects you have that have an incredible zero latency of processing, especially glue compressor having zero samples of processing latency, amp having zero samples of processing latency. There are so many effects inside of Ableton that have no processing latency. So if you've ever plugged into a computer before with your guitar and you're like, I can't use this, this, this has too much latency, Ableton has the solution to create all of those different sounds that you're looking for. It's incredible. Cool. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love. I'll see you next time.